In the introduction of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, narrator Diedrich Knickerbocker describes the origins and beautiful setting of the town of Sleepy Hollow, one of the quietest places in the whole world. Much of the description is focused on the dreamy nature of the valley and its inhabitants, who are superstitious people. The dominant spirit that haunts this region is that of the Headless Horseman, an apparition believed to be a Hessian soldier whose body is buried in the churchyard, but whose ghost seeks its missing head nightly at the nearby battleground where it was severed from his body. Knickerbocker then introduces the main character of the story, an outsider to the region, hailing from Connecticut, a schoolmaster named Ichabod Crane. He's a tall, gangly guy, and as a schoolmaster, he's authoritative and swift to inflict corporal punishment. But after hours, he entertains the older students and babysits the younger ones, gives pretty bad singing lessons, and does odd jobs, with light labor, on the farms in order to earn the free room and board he's given as he moves from household to household, spreading gossip and readily sharing what most of the people perceive as his superior intellect. In the rising action, Ichabod begins wooing the beautiful and wealthy Katrina Van Tassel. The greedy Ichabod Crane practically licks his lips when thinking of getting his hands on her family's sources of food, fine furnishings, and cash. But Ichabod has a rival in his pursuit of Katrina, the hero of Sleepy Hollow, a burly native son nicknamed Brom Bones. Brom is so well-liked and admired in the valley that no one would bother to go up against him in pursuit of Katrina. No one but the clueless Ichabod Crane, that is. Ichabod proceeds to quietly woo Katrina, often calling at the Van Tassel home and giving her singing lessons, eating the family's food, and sharing ghost stories. Now, like the rest of the residents of Sleepy Hollow, Crane is superstitious and often becomes horribly afraid when walking alone in the valley at night. Brahm and his gang regularly play pranks on Ichabod, publicly ridicule him, and even train a dog to howl whenever it hears the schoolmaster sing. One autumn day, Ichabod has an invitation delivered to him at the schoolhouse by a Van Tassel servant to attend a party at their house that night. Ichabod takes extra care in getting ready, dismissing the school children a full hour early. He looks ridiculous as he trots through the beautiful countryside on a broken down plow horse named Gunpowder, borrowed from a neighbor. At the party, Ichabod eats, then dances wildly with Katrina. The evening continues with stories of the Revolutionary War that soon give way to the usual ghost stories. Many different accounts of encounters with the Headless Horsemen are told, including one by the heroic Brom Bones. As the party breaks up, Ichabod lingers to have a private conversation with Katrina. But something, either an awkward conversation or Katrina's inattention, Knickerbocker isn't sure, sees Ichabod leave the party quite desolate and chapfallen. As the dejected Ichabod Crane begins traveling home, he feels spooked as he remembers all the ghost stories he heard that night. As he tries to cross a stream that the village people believe to be haunted, he sees another horseman is nearby. He calls out but receives no answer. This rider shadows Ichabod, speeding up or slowing down as Ichabod does. The frightened schoolmaster is finally able to see this figure is a headless rider who carries what appears to be his head on the saddle in front of him. Ichabod begins a desperate ride to the church. The headless rider is hot on his trail as Ichabod loses his saddle and must cling to the neck of his horse. As he crosses the last bridge, he turns to see if his pursuer will vanish as the legend promises. In the exciting climax of the story, the horseman stands up on his saddle and hurls his head, striking Ichabod right in his cranium and knocking him to the ground as the horseman thunders by. In the falling action, the next day, Ichabod has disappeared. Old gunpowder is found at his master's gate. The villagers search for Ichabod and they soon find his horse's lost saddle and, by the bridge, a smashed pumpkin and Ichabod's hat. But Ichabod Crane is never found. His meager belongings are dispensed with. His books and papers are burned. Most of the inhabitants believe that the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow has struck again and carried off Ichabod's body. In the resolution, Knickerbocker has written this story 30 years after he heard it from an unnamed old gentleman in a group of respected businessmen and government leaders. The gentleman reports that Ichabod Crane is alive and well, became an attorney, politician, and a court justice. Brom Bones wed Katrina soon after Ichabod's disappearance and often laughs whenever the smashed pumpkin is brought up as the story is told around the fire. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow opens with lots of description before any narrative action occurs. 
Washington Irving viewed story as a simple frame on which to stretch my materials. Irving paints the picture of Sleepy Hollow as an idyllic place, frozen in time and graced by the beauty of nature, in opposition to too rapid progress, a hallmark of literary romanticism which looks to the past and to nature for inspiration. By weaving in ancient stories and folktales, Irving makes it clear that the people of the area have remained true to their roots and have a strong sense of identity. Painting a satirical, comical, unflattering portrait of Ichabod Crane suggests that if the pompous, self-serving, gullible Crane can make it in politics, it indicates what types of people often succeed in that arena. Four denizens of the town of Sleepy Hollow and one legendary figure of local myth comprise the characters in the short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Ichabod Crane is an outsider in Sleepy Hollow who ingratiates himself through gossiping and essentially serving as a babysitter. As a schoolmaster, he's a strict disciplinarian, and his level of intellectual sophistication is questionable. In his own mind, he's a ladies' man capable of winning the heart of the Valley's most eligible young woman, Katrina Van Tassel. He thinks his horrible singing voice is good and that his jerky dancing is the best around. No one in Sleepy Hollow really misses Ichabod Crane when he's gone. Katrina Van Tassel is the star of her own life story, the equivalent of a modern-day movie star in her small town. She amuses herself by letting various men court her, including Ichabod Crane. Brom Bones is a combination of a modern-day male model, famous athlete, and all-American boy next door, a true local hero of Sleepy Hollow. Good-looking and fun-loving, he's revered by people his own age and the older generations as well. Brom and his gang pull plenty of generally harmless pranks. But when Brahms had enough of Ichabod Crane in his pursuit of Katrina Van Tassel, he most likely pulls off the biggest prank of all, posing as the Headless Horseman and scaring Ichabod into running away from Sleepy Hollow forever. Baltus Van Tassel is the epitome of a contented man. He's wealthy and comfortable, has a loyal and happy wife, and adores his only child, Katrina. Baltus has little desire to leave the confines of his happy community. Finally, readers learn about the Headless Horseman from the many different versions of the tale told about him. Supposedly, he's the ghost of a Hessian soldier who had his head shot off by a cannonball in the Revolutionary War and constantly seeks this missing body part. The night the shunned Ichabod Crane leaves the Van Tassel party, a headless rider who carries his head on the saddle in front of him pursues the terrified Ichabod Crane, running him out of Sleepy Hollow. But is that horseman really Brom Bones in disguise? And is that severed head really a pumpkin? Music, books, and brooks and streams are the central symbols in the spooky story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Music is an essential element for setting the mood throughout The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Ichabod Crane is depicted as vain and disconnected when it comes to his singing voice and his dancing ability. With tongue-in-cheek descriptions of his efforts in both areas, Ichabod Crane is revealed as not having any actual talent. Nevertheless, giving singing lessons to young people is one way Crane makes extra income. Music represents the cocky side of his personality. He's blind to his own shortcomings, but he also sings at times when he's filled with fear. Music is also present in the form of the singing birds in the valley, part of the rich description of the beautiful natural world. Books are a symbol of high-level education and learning for the inhabitants of Sleepy Hollow. The people don't seem to own books, preferring to tell stories and talk about the news. The few books that are seen in the valley are used to repair the windows of the schoolhouse, which are patched with leaves of old copybooks. Part of what impresses people about Ichabod Crane is his book learning, which, Irving points out humorously, is actually minimal. He had read several books quite through. His particular fascination with Cotton Mather's history of New England witchcraft indicates something about his level of intelligence. Mather, a Puritan, believed that the devil was very present and at work in the New England colonies, and that people could be possessed by the devil to do evil. Ichabod Crane shows how naive his thought processes are by wholeheartedly accepting Mather's words. When Ichabod Crane disappears from Sleepy Hollow, his books are burned by Hans Van Ripper. To him, they symbolize nothing but trouble, and no one in the valley ever misses them. Brooks and streams filled with fresh, flowing water are found throughout the setting of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, part of the bounty of nature found in the area's almost magical landscape. 
the brook runs at its boldest in Sleepy Hollow, where the Headless Horseman is most often seen. Murmuring brooks also represent peace and a desirable way of rural life, and rushing noisy streams represent chaos and fear, perhaps the undesirable life one encounters in cities. Nature's bounty, the unreliability of stories, and the supernatural. These are the key themes in Washington Irving's enduringly popular short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Both the bounty of nature in the wild and the bounty afforded to the farmers of the region in the story are noted. Ichabod Crane's greed for the bounty of the valley seems misplaced, as the inhabitants are neither prideful nor interested in what they can acquire outside of their residence. One of Washington Irving's main messages in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is the unreliability of stories. That is, the need to question them, whether they're legends that have been handed down, tales told among friends, or contemporary works of fiction or nonfiction. By using and explaining a complex framing device, Irving sets readers up to question the story's veracity. It's the story of Ichabod Crane narrated by Dietrich Knickerbocker, who heard it orally from an unnamed person with a 30-year lapse between the events and Knickerbocker's recording of them. In the postscript, a listener to the oral version of the tale displays doubt about it, and the storyteller confirms, I don't believe one half of it myself. Irving pokes fun at gullibility by portraying Ichabod Crane as an unquestioning believer in every ghost story he hears, resulting in his irrational level of fear. People can hold to their traditions and be entertained by old stories, but readers and listeners must be logical and ask questions. Finally, Sleepy Hollow is a place seemingly ruled by the supernatural. Ghost tales abound and are one of the main forms of entertainment when people gather together socially. Specific places are thought to be haunted, many of them attached to the most famous tale of the area, that of the Headless Horseman. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow opens up space for doubt among Irving's readers and the listeners within the frame narrative. It's up to the reader, as it is up to the citizens of Sleepy Hollow themselves, to decide which version of the tale of Ichabod Crane to believe.